It's been a busy offseason on Broadway. The Rangers have a new captain, a new backup goalie, and lots of change, hopefully for the better. John Chick of Locked On Rangers joins us to talk about that and all things New York Rangers. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today. And thank you for being, for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. It's my pleasure to welcome back to the show, John Chick, the host of Locked On New York Rangers. And John, it's been a busy off season for the Rangers. A lot of moves being made. Let's start with this one. The team has a new captain. Your thoughts on the choice? Yeah, so obviously they go with Jacob Truba, and I think, you know, the smart money was probably on either it being him or Mika Zibanejad or Chris Kreider as far as, you know, the next captain, whoever it was going to be. I mean, I guess you could make a little bit of a case for some of the other guys. If, if you want to be bold, you could have gone with, like, a younger player like an Adam Fox or a Ryan Lindgren, maybe even an Alexi Lafreniere if you, if you really want to kind of, you know, turn the, the keys over to him. But I think all along those were th- – probably the three most likely candidates. And, you know, something that I mentioned, you know, obviously I did an episode about Truba being in the captain. Uh, you know, you could have made a case, like I said, for any of those three players. With Mika and Kreider, I feel like there's almost kind of like a cancel out effect. I mean, they've both been there for such a long time. They're both such close friends. I'm not sure that either one of them would have wanted to get the captaincy over the other one, if that makes sense. I think they're perfectly content kind of being at that same level, uh, probably remaining alternate captains and allowing Jacob Truba to have it. Uh, by all accounts, Truba, you know, maybe not so much his first season with the team, but uh, in his second year and also his third year, uh, took on more of a leadership role in that locker room. And uh, they were close to naming him the captain coming into this past season. But, you know, Gallant was a first year head coach, wanted to kind of, you know, meet everybody, learn the team, see them interact with each other. And, uh, you know, I feel good about it. I, I, I all along was kind of a Kreider guy, but I'm totally cool with this as well. It's a good choice. The Rangers making some other moves. Your thoughts about bringing in Yaroslav Halak as the new backup goaltender? Yeah, I like it. You know, I, I did an offseason series where we do kind of, um, you know, a free agent spotlight kind of thing where we look at uh, just any potential targets that the Rangers might have. And it was becoming pretty obvious that they were going to need a new backup goalie. Uh, the writing was certainly on the wall that Alex Georgiev was going to be traded, not because he's not any good. I mean, he's a solid backup goalie. He can be a little bit up and down. Um, but the Rangers just weren't going to be able to afford him going forward. And, you know, there's a little bit of a salary cap crunch there. And when that's the case, you can't really afford to spend too big on your backup goalie. I thought the Rangers did a really nice job getting two thirds and a fifth for Alex Georgiev, especially uh, when you consider that the entire league knew that they had to trade him. And as for Yaroslav Halak coming in, um, he was actually one of the goalies that I mentioned when we were doing our free agent spotlight episode, because, uh, you know, you look around the league and you look at all the free agent goalies. Obviously, they're not going to chase one of the, you know, the top, top guys because they've got Igor Shesterkin. So you look at more realistic options. And I mean, there are a couple of different guys that I toss out there, but Yaroslav Halak was up there as far as uh, one of my preferred choices as a backup goalie. Again, keeping it realistic, um, you know, relative to how much the Rangers were willing to spend there. Um, somebody that, you know, he's bounced around the league a little bit. I think he tends to be uh, a little bit underrated. I mean, you got to see him play for a while there uh, with the Islanders, Gil. Yes. And, um, you know, he's had a role as he's been a starter at times. He's been in a timeshare at times. He's been in a backup at times. I think, uh, you know, overall, he'll do a good job. He can handle any role you give him. And, uh, you know, I mean, Igor Shesterkin is going to have to be Igor if the Rangers are going to get to where they need to go. But uh, the backup goalie role has grown as the years have gone on here. The backup goalies tend to play a little bit more than I think they used to. And uh, I think that Rangers got a pretty good one there in Yaroslav Halak. You have an idea roughly what the breakdown would be? How many games do you expect Halak to start if everybody stays healthy? Yeah, I mean, I think it would probably be, uh, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Whatever it would be that Alex Georgiev got last year, I think it would be fairly similar this year. Uh, I do know that Gerard Gallant doesn't seem to be a big fan. I don't think he did this once this past year. Uh, playoffs, obviously not withstanding. But I don't think one time last year he played the same goalie twice in a back-to-back. So anytime there's a back-to-back, you're going to see lock out there for at least one of them. And, um, you know, again, I, I think you could do a lot worse than him as, as your number two. The other big move this offseason for the Rangers, Vincent Trocek uh, signing a 
big contract with the team, seven years. Your thoughts on that acquisition and where he'll fit into the lineup? Yeah, I love it. Um, he was, uh, again, you know, we did this off-season series where I'm just looking at free agents and guys that I think could be a fit for the Rangers. He was somebody that I spotlighted in that as well and somebody that I've just always been a fan of. You know, he's been one of my favorite, you know, non-Rangers in the league even before he came here. I just think he's got a great all-around game. You know, he does a little bit of everything to help you. He's a good defensive forward, can win some face-offs. Uh, he'll chip in offensively. He can be on the power play. He can kill some penalties. He's really kind of a Swiss Army knife. Um, so I, I love the signing. I mean, once they signed Trocheck, it kind of meant that that was going to be just about it. They weren't going to be able to, um, you know, really go big game hunting in free agency after that point. I mean, he was the big game, you know, he, he was the big right. name player. So, so that was going to be it. Other than that, it was just kind of patchwork and, you know, some, uh, inexpensive free agents, but yeah, I think he's going to fit in great. I think he'll most likely be out there with Artemi Panarin. Um, that would be in the role that Ryan Strom used to occupy and Strom did a nice job. You know, he had his naysayers, but I think the Rangers were probably uh, about ready to look in a different direction and they let him walk. They let Andrew Kopp walk as well. You know, bring him back could have been an option, but uh, instead they go with Vincent Trocek. And, you know, a lot of people looked at the length of the, uh, the Trocek deal. Oh my man, seven years, seven years. The thing is like, they almost had to do that to keep the average annual value of the contract at kind of a reasonable level um, because, you know, he's got a good amount of money coming to him. And I think it's fine. $5.625 million per season. That's comparable with what uh, both Cop and Strom got. And, um, you know, I think Trocek is going to fit in really nicely here. We'll see who they go with on the right wing on that line. That's kind of been a revolving door over the past few years. But uh, I'd like to see Capo Caco maybe get a shot there to start the season. So that could be your second line, uh, Trocek Center and Panarin and Caco. So training camp now less than a month away. What would you say is the Rangers' biggest concern at this point with their roster? That's a good question. Um, I, I think the biggest concern is, you know, those guys that they all brought in as rentals last season, whether it was uh, Andrew Kopp or Frank Vetrano or probably Tyler Ma. I mean, he's still a free agent. It's possible he could come back, but I don't see how the Rangers could fit him in under the cap. But, you know, those rentals turned out to be just that, rentals. And they left. Uh, they made such an impact with this Ranger team in such a short amount of time. It's tough to say goodbye to so many players. Uh, you know, barely got to know them. And they were part of a really nice playoff run there. So uh, I think replacing them and having the younger kids kind of grow into that role. I mean, the two that are obvious that have to take that next step are Lafreniere and Kako. But you could also throw uh, Philip Hedl in there. He's a former first-rounder himself. And also Vitaly Kravtsov, who... I mean, for somebody who's only played 20 career games with the Rangers, it's just been like a complete saga with this guy, yeah. you know, with, with him, you know, uh, constantly at odds with the Rangers and, you know, Chris Jury and everything. And like I said, we, we could do a whole episode on that, Gil. But uh, the long and short of it is those four young players, those former first rounders, uh, they're going to have to take that next step forward if the Rangers are going to, uh, you know, be a serious cup contender this season. John, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, you can find the the podcast, excuse me, anywhere that uh, you're listening to this. We're on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple, the whole nine yards. I mean, pretty much anywhere you could conceivably find a podcast, you can find Locked On New York Rangers. As far as where to find me, uh, I'm on social media at jchick17. And then you can also follow the show's account as well at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. All right, John Chick, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, man. We'll, uh, we'll do this again soon for sure. Looking forward to it. All right. You hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think about calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. I mean, what are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over.